first of all, before we start this, this, is, this was not Amal Jones' concept. So there we have it. Let's go. Let's dive in. Full dive. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Flowers, shouts out to Flowers for the Culture, Mr. Al P. Crown Riri. <laughs> we are going to figure out how. Wait, why am I. Okay. I guess I can stop. Okay, I'm going to stop going live now, y'all. We're going to figure out how Halle Berry and Tyler Perry are connected. Six degrees of separation. This is me and uh, me and Maul Jones, okay? All right, so. Okay. Boom. Okay, boom. Halle Berry mm -hmm. did Losing Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. <laughs> she found him? She found Isaiah. She did find Isaiah. <laughs> okay, we're getting somewhere. She did. She found Isaiah. Um, you know, she was strung out on drugs. And, you know, um, Nia Long mm -hmm. was in the movie where she was getting beat up, right? Wasn't she getting beat up? Or she was on drugs. What movie was that? Tyler Perry wrote a movie about, remember his first, he, the movie he wrote where the daddy had three daughters and the mama was strung out on drugs? I don't remember that. Was that woman that are loose? Was that what he did with T.D. Jakes? No. Has Halle Berry ever done anything with T.D. Jakes? No. No. Damn it. Okay, so that's debunked. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, Halle Berry. What, 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 what I was, okay, now, now that we, I have jumped on this fully conceptualized, um, thing that Love Reigns is talking about. No, and, this uh, is inspired by Al Pete, though, and Crown Riri. Oh, oh I, I wouldn't divulge any of that <laughs> to Al Pete because we're taking from something he originally no, created. No, we're paying, we're paying true, we're, we're paying homage to it. Okay, so look, yeah. here's, here's my take. Okay. Halle Berry was in Boomerang, right? Yes. Okay, now we know when Boomerang came out, that kind of was, uh, Eddie Murphy's attempt at changing the uh, the the um, the image that had been projected of black people, like there were more uh, professional black people right. living well and, and and living in the middle class, upper true. class. This is true. That was the first thing. See, right. Tyler Perry took that concept and then brought that into the entire tapestry of the um film world but how does that connect him that had to that had what i'm saying is you will not talk to tyler perry and he'll tell you that that movie that movie boomerang did not inspire him see i could i i could i can i could bet that i can bet all the little characters he accentuated and created each one of those based off of like, like characters of that were in his movie like eartha kick is kind of Eartha Kitt and Boomerang is kind of Big Mama, Medea. like you see what I'm saying? The the Medea whole concept, that's one side of it. I never would have <coughs> connected oh, no. Medea and oh, Eartha Kitt. Oh, 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 oh. But when we're talking about an artist's mind, this is true. And how this they're gonna true. accentuate what they see as art and make it into a whole another caricature. Okay. Of a black woman. Okay. Not the exact. There's so many different um, uh, layers, and and uh, there's so many different. Um, why, why, why I can't think of this word? Layers. Uh, you could say you layers. You could say layers, but not. There's another yeah. word that's better. Don't you hate when you do that? Mm -hmm. You're saying a word that's suitable, but you know <laughs> there's a word that's better. Okay, so listen, and here's the other thing. Mm -hmm. Eartha Kitt was the original black cat woman. Okay, cool. Halle Berry was the new age cat woman. Oh. 
Man, listen, stop smoking that. I'm, I'm going to stop smoking that. And we're going to get into a real conversation on this show about what, what's All really right, going listen, on. All right, listen, y'all. Okay, so that was, this is like, that was the pre-show. We were trying to figure out. I think we did pretty good connecting. No. No. The they Eartha Kid. So. Um, right. Hey, y'all go to Twitter. Halle Berry. Go to Twitter. Thing. Uh, the NPN Facebook page. Mind blowing. Um, all that good stuff because we about to start this podcast. <laughs> Yo, that shit was mind blowing. Earth the Kid and Halle Berry. You think about the, the oh, stages. Man. That was this so. Is a PSA. Right, oh, that's hilarious. Oh, shit. Hey, Groovers. Hey, Groovers. My name is MJ. I'm the new PA. Are we still live? We're still live. Yeah, we're oh, live. shit. Okay. All right. Boom, boom. We should have like, can we play? Can um PA? Can we play? Oh, they gonna cut us off if we yeah. play. Okay, never mind. Hold up. Yeah, you know they be, they be tripping on that music. Bro. All right, cool. Oh man. Well, so we're gonna start right now. Let me okay. turn this. We are on Terry's show. Hey. Ooh, we need that. I am the praise. We are on Terry's show. I am the praise. And all. Like Jones. That. I love that. That was dope. We're going to have to put that. We're going to have to like record that. That was really cool. That little jingle. Yeah, I like, like that. That was really, really cool. All know. right, this is uh, episode 64, so here we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Love Reigns, and I'm back for another episode of the Random Thoughts of Rain podcast, the very first live recording. Uh, this is episode 64. Crazy. 64. And I am truly honored to be joined by the one, the only, Mr. Mo Jones. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Love, right? Your mic looks way cooler. I'm gonna put Listen, that next one. I mean, it's, it, people have been mad about that for years. Man. <laughs> just, just get, just get. Oh, used I gotta to turn it back. No, no. My, I can't have mine cool like him. Like that. That doesn't look cool at all. I'm gonna keep leaving mine like this. Okay. Maybe because I'm shorter than you. Yeah, but that's in front of the mic. Thank you oh, for okay. having me here. Thank you, Mr. Al P, for having me. This um, congratulations on the network and all the success and, and everything that you've been doing. Love Reigns, you're a survivor. You're like you're a cultural ambassador. Me? You have uh, just held the community of uh, Poets, lyricists, orators, the people who are considered the folk artists together in a community and uh, have they've been able to flourish and become artists. Kids even become grown artists. I've watched them grow up. I've watched people grow up not old enough to come to your jams and then they grow up and they're going to your jams. I'm just like, yeah, I know. I've, I've been there. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, you know. yeah. So congratulations. MJ Baker, the song's just the beautiful black strong sister that sings like a butterfly. <laughs> what did I say wrong? No, he's laughing at me in my mic okay. situation. Right. Look, because I know ain't nothing about what I said wrong. No, Listen. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all. Thank y'all for having me. For yes, real. sir. Yes, sir. So, of course, I know who you are, and I know how amazing you are. But for the very few people who may not know who Maul Jones is, tell them who you are and tell the people why you're dope, sir. Um, I'm dope because I'm alive and breathing. That's you know right. what I'm saying? And um, every day I wake up, I, I thank God that I'm here on this earth to just do what I can do with my art. So that thing can take on many different forms. As as being a kid that was interested in art at a young age, I picked up a lot of disciplines, whether that be from my family who was artists or my friends who was artists. That was, you know, uh, my thing. So whatever I learned, whether it was rhyming or poetry or uh, making beats or filming or everything was like, 
I would use all those things to do whatever I wanted to do with art. Not necessarily paint a picture, not necessarily write a song, not necessarily film a documentary, but I can make a dope ass documentary that has a song that was made for the documentary with you know music behind it that's kind of like a video but it's a documentary that's something new i could do that no you know i haven't seen so I, just all those disciplines i i use different disciplines i educate with my art because i've learned uh what i've learned with uh the disciplines that i've picked up i'm able to orotate and teach what i know as far as the concepts I understand in music theory, hip hop, just yeah. like anything that deals with um, the street culture, mm -hmm. all of these disciplines can be used with it. Right. And that I, that's what I figured out as a, as a kid, like, okay, I'm in the streets, um, I'm, 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 I'm in the hood, I'm poor, but there was nothing that was out of my reach right. except resources. I knew what they were. Right. And when I could get them, I, I took off with them and, and just started making history, doing things that I could see no one was doing. Right. When, when I, I, I'm, 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 I guess I'm a good analyst yeah. of what's going on around me and what's not going on around me. So how did you get into, how did you, like, how, okay, so how did that start? Like, how did you get into, like, hip hop and rap and the beginning of getting to all of those disciplines? Like, how did that start? Like, from the beginning, it was my brother. I was born in the Bronx, New York, birthplace of hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, my brother, my older brother, Christopher, mm -hmm. he was a, a rapper called, um, uh, what was his name? I don't want to misquote his name, but I, yeah. I, his, it was something D or a nice something. Mm -hmm. And he was running with uh, Herc. And he was running the streets and there was a new thing that he was doing, a place he was going. Right. And I would, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to see what that was about. After my brother got locked up and we moved out of the hood, that had stained my brain, that period of time stained my brain. So I moved from New York to Jersey, to Florida, Fort Lauderdale, to Jacksonville. I moved all these places in in all these places, I would engage a community of people who did the same thing. That those became my families. That's so true. before I I got to Jacksonville, I had I had a community of hip hop heads yeah. all over the United States. Everywhere I had moved, yeah. these people were there. But when I got to Jacksonville, it was a place that I had stayed the longest places. Yeah. And um, so what made you stay in Jacksonville? Like, what was it that that said, you know, I want to stay here and, you know, I want to I want to try to because I can imagine, right? You know, like I've only been I've been here 15 years, mm -hmm. and even just in those 15 years, I've seen Jacksonville change and grow. Yeah. So I can only imagine any time prior, any time before that was, you know, it was it was still kind of trying to find its way. Right. So like how did how did what made you say, you know what? I want to stay here and I want to like build some roots here. Um I moved I, I, I lived in Fort Lauderdale and then my brother my brother had already moved from New York to Florida first. Mm -hmm. My mother followed him. And when we moved uh, down there to Fort Lauderdale, my mother eventually got our own thing and we moved around. Just, uh, we, my father wasn't there. So mm -hmm. my father had passed away. We moved, my father was the musician in my family. He was the artist in my family. Mm -hmm. So when my father passed away and you know, New York around that time in the 80s was crazy. Mm -hmm. And my mother had to get out. We we left Florida. My mother had friends in Florida. 
So my brother was here, her friends were here, and we were able to leave, and I was able to come to Jacksonville in 1992, I believe. I got to Jacksonville. And um, when I got to Jacksonville, I had, uh, I was already like a hip hop head. I was this cat that, you know, had been all over mm -hmm. rhyming, but I never really honed my craft until I got to Jacksonville. Right. Jacksonville was where I became an actual artist. So that's why I stay here because all of the, the all the things I did here that early on were milestones for all the people here, including me. Right. Like if it's like Willie Evans Jr., I met him and this is before he met his uh, group, Asimov, who he, he's known for that that, yeah. that group. is a classic Duval um, cornerstone hip hop group. And before all of that, I would those were the cats I would get up with. Like Willie would come over to my crib, I'd come over to his crib, we'd be making beats, we'd be talking about what if Jacksonville had a place you can go where Catch yeah, listen to music. Yeah. Then we got old enough to, to have our own jams. We went to jams, then we got old enough to have our own jams, and we would have our own jams, and then that would just propel the scene. There were people we knew that uh, invested in hip-hop culture mm -hmm. because they saw Cats getting up to do this thing in their city. Before that, like we were downtown, and there were I remember old mannequins in the windows downtown, like the, the 50s, yeah. 1950s store mannequins yeah. in the windows. We'd be out there rapping. Like downtown didn't have really anything going on like back then. Like 92, you remember downtown? 90, oh, yeah. Like 94, 95, it was like, it was no real city life in Jacksonville, but it was all those old businesses that they had shut down, man. Racism. Like Woolworth? Wool Woolworth yeah. still here? Or like the side, I think. Uh, that that Woolworth building? It's like that mic. We're not using the mics no more. Cause oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm Sorry. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, no, we good, we good. Cold it up your mic. <laughs> wait, no, wait. <laughs> What no, <laughs> like, no reason. I don't even need to be talking to me. I'm doing well. No, no. <laughs> that's the world we live in, yo. I accept it and appreciate it because you better do it when you come mild. Right, right. No, no, no. no. The bike's just crazy, so I had to change it. Yeah. Though. But we okay, did. So, uh, yeah. so, speaking of, okay, so speaking of the, the world that we're living mm -hmm. in, right? Like, shit's mad fucking crazy, mm -hmm. right? I was telling somebody earlier today, like, it feels like we're in the Twilight Zone, the Truman right. Show, right. and a season of Black Mirror on Netflix right. all at the same time. Oh, like, yeah. This shit feels weird as fuck, right? right. So from a, I, I feel like we, we, everybody know what's going on. Everybody know that shit's hard. Uh -huh. Shit's like just really, really fucking crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to say this. Rest in peace to Breonna Taylor. Oh. Shit's fucked. It's shit. fucked up. And it's fucked up. So like, this is fucked up, man. Like, you know, I have a lot of shit, a lot of shit that I want to say, but I'm just not, I'm not going to right now. But. Are we said so? Nope. Oh, I just want to make sure. <laughs> no. So, um, go vote. That's, that's the only thing I, I can say about it. Definitely. So, everything is happening, right? Yeah. Um, we, we talk a lot about the destruction and the despair and all that stuff. What's, what's something that you, what's some Maul Jones wisdom you would give to, like, your colleagues or your, your partners, you know what I'm saying, like, that's, that might be struggling mm -hmm. during this time? You right. know, because there's a lot of creatives who are really like struggling right. and finding it hard to just get by. Right. So, what's something? What's some Maul Jones wisdom that you would impart to 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 like your homeboys to say like, dude, it's we good. Uh, um, you you can't really tell someone that's going through a financial <clears throat> struggle something that's gonna like change any any of the the feelings or emotions right. that's going on because that's the situation. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, anybody can end up in it in a couple of weeks. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. A few weeks. So it's like you have to put yourself in that position and help that person if you can. If you're not in the position, do what you can to help them. I, I, I can't pay another man's bills, but I can tell him exactly what I'm doing. Right. Like exactly what I'm doing. Not, not sugar-coat it for him or water it down to where he can't go out and do the same thing. Uh, we all in the struggle. I, I got you. Got to know that if I'm telling you about something, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm not might might not be in the same place as you, but I've been there. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta just uh, just think positive and be positive, man. Because negativity and letting uh, things and issues of the world bring you down could put you in a worse place, bro. I, I, and I know the people there too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, just keep your head up, man, and, and try to think of something new to do. Yeah. Don't think of any of the old things that people have done to get anything. Robbery is an old thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, all of that type of stuff. Uh, uh, trying to get over on the next man. Help that man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just having somebody back is a, is a, that's like giving them a gold bar yeah. in this day and age. So do that to somebody and see where that gets you instead of just thinking the world is closing in on you because that's what they want us to think. But we really own it. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and, and that's, um, that's what I've been doing since you know, this whole COVID thing kick off. It, it shut down the lyricist live and that was like that was a thing. I was headed on a ten year streak, no violence in Jackson. <coughs> yeah. Then the lyricist uh COVID happened, the lyricist live shut down and we got fifty murders in like thirty days. 50 gun murder like the the crime rate is like excelling. And it only speaks to the fact that artists are needed. And, and, and I'm not saying because there's no lyricist live, the crime rate, rate went up. Yeah. But with no lyricist live, the crime rate went up. And you, you know what I'm saying? And we've been out there for 10 years advocating for these brothers and sisters that we can do positive things and it's celebrated by the city. The city right. has... A, they can stand out there with us and support what we're doing. Right. And that's what these kids need. All of these kids that's that's going through all of this, man, it's crazy in Jacksonville. Yeah, it is. I it's, mean, it's the gang crazy in Jacksonville. I, don't, don't I, I didn't know even that. know Jacksonville had, like, damn gangs. And oh, I was man, just like, if you don't know man, that, man, you, you got I literally man. been, oh. like, under a rock or something. But, I mean, I guess I never really, mm -hmm. like, I've always, you know... I don't pro like I'm not from the hood, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not not saying that the hood is the only place that gangs exist, but right. you know, my mom sheltered me from a lot of that shit. Right. <laughs> you know what and I mean? Those are the and those, celebrate. Yeah, like well, that's why I said, Oh yeah, trust me. You anybody that know me, anybody that mm -hmm. you see, I celebrate my mom all the time. Yes. I'm so thankful for that lady. Like for real, for real. Cause Shout yeah, you in the mom. middle of the desert thinking that you look, you growing up in the Congo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With, with yeah. abundance. But yeah. your mama have you thinking you you in abundant living life yeah, and she's struggling. You know what I'm saying? All, yep, all the time. And it's 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 crazy, you know what I mean? Like I do want to say this too, like it's you know, with everything that's happening. You know, not being able to perform and not being able to do stuff like the lyricist live. Like, how have you, how have you been like coping through that? Like, how what has got you, you know, kept you going in trying to find other avenues? Living by what I'm talking about, living by what I'm saying, do something new. I can always, like, the lyricist live shut down. Nothing. I that opened up nothing but a sea of opportunity that just just overtook me. I really can't get to the lyricist live right now. And that's, and, and why is that happening? Because COVID, they, that, that's God. You see what I'm saying? Because the things that I'm doing now are, are uh, they're going to be more impactful. The lyricist live was impactful. 
for what it was and what it was doing from the time period it was doing it. And as soon as um, it opens back up, that we're going to do that again. But we're taking the lyricist live at, to another place now. It's it's transcending. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be a street cipher. But then again, it's a lot of components to freestyle rap that creates a lot of that can create a lot of industry. But forget about that mm -hmm. because COVID's happening and that's not happening right now. What I what I've been doing is. Um, being involved with several different art projects, um, I like like I, everybody's known. I'm known for hosting the cipher, the lyricist live. But I've taken on another role. I like Mr. Al P has many roles. <laughs> I, I I've I've become my my documentary side of it, capturing Duval artists. That's what I've always wanted to do, and that's what I've always been into. And the Color Jacks Blue project with them putting the mural on the uh, wall on Myrtle, mm -hmm. which was a, was literally the spot I used to bring a cleanup crew over to with with, with an organization that just cleaned up the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We used to clean that area up because we loved it, but that's historic Durkeyville. But they, it, it's getting trashed and there's really no city attention. Mm -hmm. So... I partnered with organizations to clean up that um, area, and then boom, Shawana calls with the Color Jacks Blue Project. It's like, you know, the Lord just laying out a path. We mm -hmm. cleaned the area, then they gave us the building, I, I and I had the opportunity to document the artist painting that wall. It wasn't me painting the wall. It wasn't me that needed to have the voice. Mm -hmm. So what I did was take my camera and documented what was happening instead of standing in front of it. And that was another thing I could do that was different. Mm -hmm. You see, it was different from the role I was doing. And it, and in doing that, I, I got to embrace my Tyler Perry side, my Spike Lee side, yeah. my, you, you, all of these... Um, great producers that I respect and grew up watching. You know, when 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 um Al P started the network, I see that. I see those people. I don't I, I just I, I can't not believe in people. Right. And it's a it, it's very hard for me because everything I'm trying to do, I'm going to do. Like everything I'll be. He says he's going to do something. He, you know what I'm saying? It's like we we have we can have talks about what we're going to do with plans to do them. Mm -hmm. And then you get inside of a community where uh, you know, there, there might be a lot of, of that talk mm -hmm. that buffered progress. You see what I'm saying? And then yeah. we, well, once you figure that out, you just go. So that that's like, oh, K Roblox. Oh, this is live not happening. Oh, pshaw. boom, document. Right. So when I, when I'm, uh, I I get we get paid for stipends. I can work off, um, my documentary work. I got another a project with a group of artists called Art Workers United, and that was a project with like six other artists that I uh, graduated from a uh, artist professional artist course that was sponsored by the Cultural Council of Greater Jacksonville in, in 2014. Mm -hmm. So me and that group of artists uh, decided to do a protest artwork um, call to artists and we got like over 200 submissions. Wow. We got sponsorships and we're going to do a, a drive-in style movie event that's all protest artwork and it's beautiful right. artwork all original stuff mm -hmm. i've got music and music pieces in there i hosted that um and that was that's going to be on film so i me hosting that i didn't have to be there i record myself hosting it and boom that's another thing if i pigeonhole myself into just hosting, rapping, and cy decipher at the list is live, what would I be doing right now? I'm right. busy as hell. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, I couldn't, if somebody said, yo, do a cipher tomorrow, I'd be like, yo, chill. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, I'd be like yo. Uh, and, and I got this, uh, 
<laughs> I, I've ended up partnering with this company that's, that has developed a new social media app, and they wanted me to come in on the end of it and develop some content for them. Nice. And the uh, app is called Relevant, and it's the concept of it is vibes. So it's not like your Facebook page. It's like a vibe. You can create a vibe. You can create a Facebook page, a fan page, or you can create a vibe. And the vibe really is all your people. Everybody that's ever vibe with you. People, you can have a vibe with people that just bought your music. And then you know your base. You, you, it's, it, 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 it turns these concepts into like what we should be doing as artists. Yeah. Um, instead of just pouring all ourself out onto Facebook with no real, um, you know, you did no real engagement with the people you want to target. Yeah. You got these algorithms that destroy all that. 5,000 friends, you post something and it's got like three or four likes because only three or four people seen it. Yep. Now they stopping the the live streams and... They cut yeah. Mr. Little yeah. Farrakhan off. No. Bye. They cut <laughs> Boosie <laughs> off. Yeah. Facebook. Facebook cut. He's banned. So that's a that's a prominent wow. black male leader in my life that has inspired me to become who I am. I've seen this man play the uh, violin like the the classic violin, like the uh, really? a classic violin. So, oh yeah, man, he got uh, many musical talents. They do, they won't tell you that, but yeah. what I'm saying is that this is what inspires me to be who I am, and they're, they're cutting these people from us, these inspirational people yeah. from us. They're either dying in front of us, or banned in front of us, or sent to prison in front of us. Right. Mm. And that's why I've kept, it's been so important for me to keep what I've kept going in Jacksonville. It's just like, hey, it don't matter what y'all think. I can always use the lyricist live as, hey, but hey, man, y'all say crime and rap and blah, 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 but I've been doing this for 10 years, bro. We ain't had no, no fights or nothing. They don't even be cursing out there, bro. So I don't know what you, you know what I'm saying? When they, when they, when I get in these, these, uh, corporate offices and they talk like that I just shut them right down yeah. because they can't after the after I say what I say and then I say oh yeah I just came back from doing Shakespeare in England oh you didn't know that oh yeah but whatever mm -hmm. they we break in these stereotypes that's what it th these things I'm trying to do does and it it projects people up like Al P. It, it, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's going to make a Al P be taken serious by these people that, that might not see that there's more people here than just me. Yeah. And they don't do Shakespeare, but they do genius-ass shit that y'all need to know about. Right. And I'm just one of them. Right. You see what I'm saying? And um, this relevant app. I created an interface that connects everyone around the world to the black community through an <coughs> interface called the Uplift. Okay. So the Uplift inside of this app called Relevant, when you download it, and everything's still being built out, but it's launched now, and you can download and get on there and create your vibe and all that now. But um, the uplift portion of this app is an interface like Facebook Marketplace or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's a marketplace that's all black and anybody can buy from it, that's but it's saying. all black. Yeah. If you're if, if you're a white person that don't know have any black friends, but you want to support black, <laughs> uh, black you want to eat yeah. in a black restaurant all month, you go to the uplift and go to eat up inside of the uplift and you you. You don't need black friends. You can support black business right there. You can buy. You can buy anything black. You can. You can. You can even buy black tent camping supplies from That's black people who create that. So there's different categories inside of it, and all of them will lead you to the black business in your area. So if I go to Atlanta, this app is going to tell me all the uh, black-owned restaurants 
within a mile radius if I want it. So if I'm there visiting and I want to go to a a black-owned restaurant, I can go there through this app. If I go to Alaska and there's one black-owned restaurant there, you'll find it on the uplift. And I want to make that concept like a um, a global thing. You know what I'm saying? It's it's coming. So um, that's just another thing. It has nothing to do with rap, but it does have something to do with the black community, and to me, that's real rap. Yeah. And that's, that's so. you know, so just doing different things. So y'all make sure y'all download that. Download it. Download the uh, relevant. relevant app. Make sure you uh, utilize the uplift and all that good stuff. So how can yeah. people get in contact with you, Ma? How can they, like, support your music, all that good stuff? Okay, my music is another thing. I'm creating... Um, well, I'm, it's already done. I got, a, I got a, I got an album and some EPs sitting. Um, there's a bunch of dude artists on there. I got Highland on there, Twan, my man Da, Morris Yaw, mm-hmm. uh, just um, man, who else? Man, I ain't got LP yet, but I'm trying to work up a budget that. Is big <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm trying He's to. expensive. Uh, 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 I mean, the, the, the PA is talking too much. Don't listen to the PA. You got to ride it. You got to ride it. I want to see the album Friday. It, it, it can't come out until that happens. So when that happens, you it's going to come out. It can't come out until that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, be, oh, it man. Come out. It can't come out until that happens. You know what I'm saying? That. Yeah. And he know, he looking like crazy because you're like, why isn't that not happening like right now? He, he already... I am not looking like that, fella. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that should be happening. I'm looking like that. Damn it. <laughs> I want to just rap with Al B. <laughs> Basically. He's expensive. <laughs> so, 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 you know, that that's what I'm doing. I, I do have a... a Album and you do you can um, follow me on fa- uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Malls Mind, M A L S M I N D. I do have a documentary page for all my um, documentary work that I'm doing with Color Jacks Blue. I'm currently on the sixth episode of The Wall, um, where I'm featuring different artists and talking about their story. People who have uh, yeah, um, have family that are victims of the injustices of the people that are on the wall, mm-hmm. and um, you can follow that on uh, Duval Docu Series. It's called Duval Docu Series on YouTube. And you can find that page and follow that stuff. But yeah, I'm just trying to stay busy. Like tonight, yeah. I might go home. Um, Record a song, shelf it, <laughs> um, get up early in the morning, go shoot somebody at the wall, a color jacks blue. Yeah. Um, we got this um, project that is coming October 2nd. I told y'all, the drive-in theater. It was supposed to be Friday night, but there is going to be rains, and rain kills like 70% visibility with the projector screen we got. So we're doing it next week. Everybody can see it, and, and now I'm saying it on the on uh, you know Mr. Peterson's uh, neighborhood network, <laughs> and that's how I was gonna get outreach. Yeah. See, this is a, um, a tool for artist outreach. This is what Al Pete is doing for y'all. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like, it, of course, y'all gonna say, "Oh, it's his network." Man, shut up. <laughs> Just get on it. <laughs> Just get on it. <laughs> you don't need support it. I like this thing. You know, but um, yeah, um, you can do all that. Follow me. Man, I need more likes, man. <laughs> I want you know what I'm saying? I need more engagement because I'm trying to do some some things that I'm going to need a community of people just like I had the full community support mm-hmm. at the Lyrics is Live, uh, other things I'm doing. We need y'all, these black men need y'all full support out here, y'all. Like, you see what's going on, what's happening. Support brothers that's ducking the bullets. 
and out here like promoting positivity and trying to send you a message that's delivered specifically for you. Like so just man, respect that, man. Like and one like big shouts out to Al P. Like dead serious, man, because I don't get to shout him out enough. So I'm going to do it all on his network. <laughs> if you don't like it, like, uh, it don't really matter. I know how to show my brother's love. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing to me. Yeah. Be the same way. Like, That's what's up. That's like what's up. Be more like Alpi. Be more like Alpi. Like what would Al do? <laughs> we need some, oh. I'll be minding my damn yeah. business, y'all. Yeah. Uh, we should get some, some bracelets that say WWAD. What would, what would Al do? Buying Adidas sweatsuit. Definitely. <laughs> some Adidas shoes. Some Adidas shoes. <laughs> oh man! Well, one of the other reasons, Ma, that I do the podcast is to, um, like, I'm challenging myself to to give people, you know, give more people their flowers while they're here. You know what I mean? Like, shit's just been mad crazy, and I feel like we all need at some point we need somebody to give us flowers, right? So I'm giving you your flowers, and I'm saying. I see you. I've I've always seen you. I'm always I've always been a fan. I always support you, and you so I just I appreciate you, sir. Thank you for everything that you not only do for uh, for Duval, but thank you for everything that you do for the culture. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I love you. you. Thank you for thanking me. I love you. Give me a hug. Right yes, on sir. live. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's my thing. It, it, what, I don't know if people know this, but like everybody in this room. Like, knowing each other for, like, 15 years, like, 10 yeah. years. Like, it ain't, it ain't really nothing for us to be up in here, like, feeling comfortable around each other. Like, I, you know, so, um, like, man, I love y'all, man. Like, I, I, I don't get to say it enough. See? There we go. And that's what we got to do every yeah. day, all of that's us, man. It. We on, and nobody promised tomorrow, man. We, we sitting here talking, and my brother is gone who last year was here and is just as impactful and important as us. So we got to, like, thank you so much for my flowers. I'm taking them, I'm smelling them, I'm sniffing them, I'm jumping in them. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because I can. I love it. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. So thank y'all for tuning in to the Red and Thoughts of Rain podcast. We'll be back again next month. Next month. Next month. For another NPN night, some more dope shit. And uh, yeah, stay tuned, man, because you never know who my next guest is going to be. So, peace. The real Rick Ross. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Somebody tell Rick Ross to call me. Yo, peace. For real. I know that. Now, that like could be some six six degrees of separation. How many, how many degrees separate me?